Assalamu alaikum and welcome back from the break. You're joining myself, Adam, Shahina, Zainab and Sultana Parvin and we've had a wonderful discussion on the topic of fantasy and how it affects modern society. But if you have missed it or any of the shows this week, do join us this Sunday at 11 o'clock for Women's Best Bits. We'll now go to our final segment of the show, Her Reviews. In this segment of the show, we'll be reviewing an interesting piece from our sister Sultana Parvin, which is entitled Better to Have Loved. So, sister, can you just explain to us what the gist of this, what the, basically what the gist of this article is and what inspired you to write it okay. and why Better to Have yeah, Loved? I mean, I, I took the title from the famous, and it's actually in the piece, which is, it is better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. That's like a famous quote yeah. and saying that some people say. And I was really looking, I was inspired because um, I was in the car once with my kids and they were listening to some Islamic nasheeds and I was thinking more carefully about the lyrics to these a lot of these nasheeds and they talk a lot about Allah and closeness to him and loving him and I was thinking that really in any other context they would be love songs um, if you listen to Western love songs like ballads they focus on this kind of enduring love you know a love that can succumb and overcome everything mm. and it's a really really powerful thing I mean this is the most um, off written thing that most people write about not just in contemporary writing or contemporary lyrics but even in the past even in the traditions of Islam when they've talked about there's you know lots of poets and what have you have talked about love talked about loss like all of those Rumi, kind of things example, like Rumi yeah. yes so I looked, thought about this long and hard, and I thought that from the Muslim perspective, for Muslims, there's something so personal about the relationship that they have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's something that causes them to write these, you know, some of some very inspiring nasheed sometimes about this love connection that they have with Allah and how this love connection is born out of a, um, an understanding that we already have about love. So there's some universal truths about love that I think exist for all times and places. Love is enduring. It can sometimes, it may not last forever. Um, it can change your life forever, all of these kind of things. And I thought about how all of these sung things, plus so many other things that are hard to explain, would explain the way that the relationship that a believer has with his Lord that they have this connection with Allah which is premised on love Allah's love for you and your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how profound really that is how profound that is that is the the the, the most important relationship in your life mm -hmm. because everything depends upon it and I think it just I, I needed to kind of get that down on paper and talk about that um, in a way which I felt that kind of captured the essence of what that would mean for us you know in in the current reality that we live where people don't really believe in God or we live in societies which are pretty much faithless or godless mm. what does that mean and I think that that's what kind of you know I think what I really enjoyed about reading that piece was how you tackled different sorts of love different types of love how you delved into all of that and there's a nice build up to the ultimate kind of love yeah. and that is the love and the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that, that bit that really hit me it covered me in warmth hope and almost chokes you but that, that you hope that this is you and so that hadith that you put after you explored all those relationships and the hadith says um and my slave keeps on coming closer to me through performing no awful voluntary deeds until i love him so i become his sense of hearing with which he hears and his sense of sight with which he sees and his hand with, with which he grips and his leg with which he walks and if he asks me I will give him and if he asks my protection I will protect him and this is from Bukhari mm -hmm. and you know there's like so many emotions that go through and yeah. for me it's like Ya Allah let me be one of those people yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. that you would describe here definitely and it's quite interesting because there's so many different emotions aren't there there's and you explained that in your article there is heartache there's joy there is elation but love somehow seems to be one of those emotions that touches everyone yes. at any point and, yes. and the, the relationship that we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an ongoing loving relationship yes. I and mean, we just talked about fantasy and how to some degree it can be taken to an extreme mm. and it's something that in a modern in the modern world today at a time when you know the rationale is more important than what's considered irrational mm. that somehow people can still venture towards fantasy and they yeah. could still try and, and try, try and live by fantasy and equally just as much it's interesting how you know many people have become a lot less religious yeah. but yet still that 
that, 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 yeah, the probing of trying to find out who the creator is yeah. and our purpose in life yeah. is something that still bewilders a lot of people, mm -hmm. and, that, and that's something that's really, really important as and well. Some of the things that's so, um, like explored in the article is the impact of love, the difference of the love between mm -hmm. husband and wife, or your love for your child, yeah. and we know how deep those loves, especially a love between a mother and a child, yeah. yet something, a love for Allah still supersedes that. It's, yeah. so, it's still so much more unique that it's so much more beyond that words can't express. Mm. And, and I think what's really wonderful and beautiful is there's the hadith of the Prophet wasallam. I haven't included it in the article where he talks about um, the mother's love for her child and he talks about would a, would a mother ever, you know, throw her child into a blazing mm. fire? Um, and you know the Sahaba said, "No, Ya Rasulullah." You know she loves her, and he said, "Well, this is Allah's love for His slave is even more than this mother's for her child." Mm. And I think that that's the key thing that you have, um, Subhanallah. You have a love that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has for His slave, which is absolutely born out of why He created you in the first place. He He created you out of a love mm. for Him. And, and when these hadith, you hear these hadith, it kind of blows your mind, it's profound. And I think it goes back to this thing about all human beings are seeking spiritual fulfillment. It might be through fantasy, it might through, be through escapism. And in a society which doesn't focus on a creator, it can be done through these other forms Absolutely, of escapism. Yeah. But the core of it is, is that they want to feel a connection. Absolutely. They want to feel a connection to something bigger than just the, you know, the, the dunya, if you like. And that relationship with Allah super surpasses that. And that's why in the modern era, people have not turned away from religion. They haven't done that. You have technological advancement. You have all of these kind of things that you can gain. But why do people feel that need, that connection, that validation, that connection? Because uh, it's an in integral part of who you are. It's part of your fitra. And therefore, it will answer so many of those connections and it will bring ease. And, you know, in times of great difficulty, you will still see that people, even when they're going through much hardship, they feel that closeness to Allah even through their hardship, even sometimes more. They feel that Allah loves them mm. and through that test, he's, he's expiating their sins and he's drawing you know, them closer to him. And I think that that's a profound. It's that's a profound, profound. idea. And it, and it obviously works against love that, as you said, um, can be enjoyed, but doesn't mean it for a lifetime. But yeah. Pamela, Sister Zainab, what do you think about make of this article? No, I just think any article that goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always the the crux of the issue, like like you were saying, all roads lead back to Allah. So when you're talking, um, when we're talking about the the different concepts, the different issues, or why people go into uh, the vampires and all that, all that kind of stuff, what they're looking for: security, love, direction, um, mm -hmm. the sense of accompli accomplishment, purpose, um, security. So many different things, isn't it? And I was telling those how to satisfy all of those elements within you, whether it's in your relationship with him or whether it's in your, your general life and those interactions that you, yeah. that you have with others. And it's moving away from him and being distracted from him That's and from our yeah. purpose. That is what actually pulls us away from mm -hmm. actually fulfilling any yeah, of these things. Yeah. And it's, it's sad that, you know, that's the case. And blogs like this are really important to kind of you know, bring us back to what's important. What's the most important thing, what's the yeah. most important love as well. Just yeah. like yeah. for that discussion as well. We've come to the end of the show, but tune in tomorrow where we will be delving into the issue of tawakkul, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan for tuning in. And remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wherever you are. But before we go, here's a short reminder of the competition that we're holding this week. This week on Women's AM, we are holding an exciting competition for you sisters out there. Up for Grabs is an Islamic eye prayer, an electronic Salah prayer learning device incorporated within a prayer mat. Since this is such a special device, this week we are asking our viewers to write in and tell us why you should win this in 50 words. Who would use it? Do you have a friend who recently accepted Islam you would like to give it to? Or a member of your family has started to pray? Or you want to gift it to someone special? Send in your answers to womensam at islamchannel.tv along with your name and address and what you most like about Women's AM. The deadline for entries is Friday 28th of March 2014 at 4pm. All applicants need to be over 18 and resided in the UK. Please note only one entry per person per household. A winner will be selected with the most inspirational answer and the winner's name will be announced on Monday's show. So get entering. So do enter. It's a fantastic and wonderful prize, inshallah, that will benefit the one who wins it. From me and the sisters here, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.